Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. In today's video of picking plates, let's talk about the machined plate option. If you haven't seen the other videos in the series, what are you waiting for? There's some great videos linked in the description box below. You get to hear me talk about why I sold my Rogue calibrated powerlifting plates, why you shouldn't just go cheap bottom of the barrel plates, why you should avoid bumper plates, what you should look for if you're looking for used or secondhand plates, and then today, the machined plate option. And then eventually at some time in the future, we'll talk calibrated plates as well. Because even though I sold mine, there's some great options out there if you're interested that weren't available a couple of years ago. And if you're scratching your head and saying, I don't know what a machined plate is, I beg to differ my friends, because if I were to ask you to imagine what your idea of a vintage or classic weight plate was, chances are you're gonna think of either an Avanco or a York plate. Because I know I do, and I'm assuming you're like me if you're watching this channel and haven't unsubscribed yet, but with the Ivanko side, there's two plates in particular. Number one is their Easy Grip plate, also referred to as their revolvers. You know because it has seven holes in it, easy to grip as the name implies. Or their OM plates, which are also referred to their deep dish plates. It has a triple spoke design on it. Again, very iconic. Or on the York side, the milled Yorks, which kind of tough to tell from the front. A lot of the Yorks look the same, but you turn that bad boy around and take a look at it from the behind, you see those smooth grooves. And wants to say hello and slap me on your bar. So those are kind of the plates that I think of when I think of classic weight plates or just weight plates in general, and they all happen to be machined, which is kind of cool. And not only are those all kind of vintage plates, you see them on the secondhand market sometimes, but they're still made new today. Although quality wise, maybe not as good as some of the older versions that are out there, but that might be a topic for another video. So those are the plates that I think of. So chances are you've seen them or at least know what they look like before. Now, with the machine plates, what I'll say is there's a lot of other options besides those ones because Ivanko's can tend to be expensive. I'll talk about price towards the end of this video. But what you'll also see out there are things like Troy. Rogue Fitness now has two machine plates out there. In fact, it's really interesting to take a look at the Rogue options because they have the six shooters and they have their just regular what they call machined plates, which both look eerily similar to their Ivanko counterparts. The difference is, is that the Rogue Six Shooters have one less hole in them, and the Rogue Machined Plates have one more spoke in them. So you trade out a hole for a spoke, and there's an innuendo in there to be made somehow, somewhere. Uh, but there's also ones by Rep Fitness, they're equalizer plates, and I'm sure there's other ones I'm forgetting, but there's some affordable options out there as well. Now, I think machine plates for most people are the best way to go because they really fall in the middle of the other options out there. Meaning that if you take a look at the cheap plates video I did, Yes, they're cheap and easily affordable, but there's a lot of things you have to trade in in terms of quality and in terms of how much they actually weigh, and to me, it's not worth it. On the other hand, on the calibrated spectrum, you have really accurate, really nice plates that are finished down to the fine details, but also at a very expensive cost. Machined or milled, to me, is the best of both worlds. And I say or mach machined or milled because, to me, they're the same thing because milling is a process which requires a machine, so technically it's machining as well. But when you talk to people, usually people refer to York as milled, Ivanko as machined. Most new manufacturers just say they're machined, so I'm sticking with machined for the most part if I can remember in this short little five to 10 minute video. Um, but I think they're the best option for most people out there. Those are the plates I would recommend for most people because you get a good quality at a good price if you do your shopping around. And again, I'll talk about that at the end of this video. So what makes a machined plate a machined plate? Well, let's kind of dumb this down and I'm gonna to try to keep this as easy and simple as possible. There's gonna be some exaggeration. Basically, it's like you're baking a cake. So you take all the ingredients, you mix them together, you put those in a mold or a cast, you let it set, you then take it out and you have your finished product in whatever that shape that mold should be. Kind of like you're baking a cake. That's kind of how weight plates work. Now on the cheaper spectrum, the companies that do this usually go with the cheaper ingredients. Some more filler can result in some issues on the end in terms of quality, weights not weighing what they should, some finish issues. Again, I cover all of that in my cheap plates video, linked in the description box below. On the machining process, you're still casting the plate in a mold, so to say, but there's some finer steps that are taken past that point. You're not just ripping it out of the mold and putting it in a box on a shelf, which happens with a lot of the cheaper plates. Instead, as the name implies, you're machining the plate as well. What this usually entails is the center hole is drilled with a machine instead of cast like the cheaper plates. What this allows for is a much tighter hole, so it's gonna be tighter, it's gonna be more uniform, and it's gonna fit and feel better on your bar. Again, more innuendos in there if you want them. 
Um, but it's not going to have any slop on the bar, anything hanging off that's going to scratch your bar, no issues with it potentially not fitting or being way too big. It's going to be precise because you're using a machine to do so, not only in that particular plate, but across all the plates that you get if you get a set. So you're going to have more uniformity across your entire plate set where you don't have to avoid certain plates because it's too thick or that hole's too big. Killing myself, trust me, I'm trying to restrain myself. Um, so the machining process on the center hole is one of the aspects. Oftentimes on the back, you'll also have the plate back machined down. So you're basically cutting metal away. What this is going to do is a couple of things. It's going to allow for a better overall finish because you're getting rid of a lot of those imperfections that are on the back that might be caused by the casting. Now you could leave that in a raw finish like the York has or some of the vintage plates having those grooves or you could go for a smoother finish. Again, it's going to vary depending on manufacturer. But the milling process on the back is also super huge because as you're doing that, you can ensure that you stop at a point in time which number one guarantees that the plate thickness is going to be uniform across the line so you don't have varying thickness across the same 45 pound plates let's say but also within the weight tolerance of the plate itself and this is why machined or milled plates typically come with a two percent tolerance meaning that they're going to be two percent within the stated weight on the plate itself in fact some of the rogue versions these days are within one percent so you can make sure that you're more accurate in that regard, which to me is probably one of the biggest things. You'll also see that machining process oftentimes lead out to the edges and lips of the actual weight plates themselves. So in the long run, you get a much nicer looking plate, which is going to be more functional because you're getting rid of a lot of those inefficiencies from the casting process and a much more accurate one when it comes to the center hole tolerance and the actual weight tolerance itself. And as I mentioned, for the most part, you can actually get plates that are within your budget or not much more expensive than some of the cheaper options if you do your due diligence. And this is where sometimes the machined option can really get out of hand, especially if you're looking at stuff like Ivanko's, those tend to be very expensive. Now there are some sites that sell them with let's say like free shipping, because if you take a look at just the general cost of one plate, they are expensive in general. You can get some deals where they package two plates together and offer free shipping, which might appear to be at somewhat of a discount, but when you break it down per plate, and then factor in that they're increasing the cost because of the free shipping, it actually still ends up being a lot more expensive than again, some of the budget options why a lot of people go that way. Another big issue with some of the ones like Ivanko or York, if you try to buy in a set, and I think this even extends to like the Troy sets that I've seen, is they have a lot of weird combinations of plates. So you might get several hundred pounds of plates in a set, but it's gonna be like a handful of 45s, and then like multiple pairs of 35. And, and let me kind of take a little second to step back here because I am a 35 pound plate supporter. There's a lot of people in the home gym or gym environment that say 35 plates don't matter. I'm here to tell you all plates matter, my friends. But some of these damn sets are including like two sets of 35. So you get four 35s, which is not needed. You get, you know, four 25s. You get six 10s or four fives. It's a lot of plates that don't make sense. I'd ideally like to see a plate set that has a set of fives, two sets of 10s, 25s, 35s, and basically just allow you to increase the number of pairs of 45s you get. That would be ideal. Hardly anybody does it. Somebody go ahead and fix that. That being said, on top of that, oftentimes with the weight sets, they also include their barbell with it. So you get a, an Ivanko bar or you get a Troy bar or a York bar. And oftentimes these bars aren't that great. It's their bottom of the barrel bar, which you'll probably end up replacing anyways. And it's just an included cost in what you're already paying. And most people don't want to get that because they just want the plates and they want to have some freedom and choice of their barbell. So that's a big issue with that. But again, if you do your due diligence and shopping around, you can find some good deals out there. I think I bought my Ivanko set from Dumbbell Buddy. You can customize some sets. It's still a little bit more pricey, but that was a price I was willing to pay at a point in time. If you're going to buy something from like Rogue or Rep, they do have machined options that might be valuable to look into because if you're buying a lot from them already, chances are you're already kind of hitting that freight shipping number and adding on weight sets don't add as much, so the shipping isn't as much. But again, it's really up to you at the end of the day of what you wanna do. But in my opinion, the machined or milled option is the best of both worlds. Decent price for above decent plates, kind of between calibrated and cheap, and you get a good looking plate that I don't think anyone can really argue with that they look pretty kick-ass, which is all that matters in the gym, right? It doesn't matter what you lift, it matters what you look like lifting. At least that's what I like to tell myself. So hopefully that answered some questions on the machined or milled option. If you have other questions on this or questions on the calibrated video that I'll be doing or reviews of the plates I have or other equipment, leave those in the comment section below. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.